of, of how we of how we um how we conduct ourselves. And, and you know what? Um I saw one time um I saw the the uh CEO, I guess you could say, director or whatever, he yeah, um he or she whatever, you know, they the way that they carried themselves um was so strong that all the managers that fell up under them carried themselves in the exact same way. Mm. And it was very toxic. It was very toxic. And they started, and I know that it wasn't necessarily a part of their personality so much, but they just started, because that, because that culture was so strong there, they started conducting themselves in a very similar way. It was an ugly thing. It was an <laughs> ugly thing, too. So I think that you, when you're in a leadership role, you have to be mindful of, all right, where where you're, um, what's influencing you, mm -hmm. I would say that. Because then you, whatever's influencing you, you're probably going to influence your, the people who are coming to you, who are reporting to you in the same type of way. Yeah. Right? And then guess what? Those people can go home and can influence their children mm -hmm. <laughs> in it's that same pattern. way. It's, it's a pattern. It's a pattern, right? And all these Welcome, everyone, uh, once again to another episode of Speaking with Gravity, the podcast. I am Joshua Williams. Hello, everyone. I am Hannah Williams. And Terrence Tokens. And we are your hosts. This is uh, our, what, our uh, eighth episode of the season now. So uh, the eighth episode that you've seen uh, this group together, we, we, we are the new, the new group of uh, Speaking with Gravity, the new faces um, of Speaking with Gravity of this podcast. So... And, and of course, we, we're um, we're excited, uh, just as excited as we were in episode one, right? Yes. yes. Uh, for you all inviting us into your homes, into your phones, <laughs> into um, your ears, into your ears, <laughs> right? Right. So, uh, so we can talk about uh, mental health and how everything affects everything. Yes, as Curvin would always say. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, unseen struggles in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So, just thinking about the idea that you know. That we go through things in the workplace, right? We have triggers, mental health triggers in the workplace. Sometimes, y'all, we bring stuff to work from home mm -hmm. or from wherever, too. And and we allow those things to affect us in the workplace. Sometimes bleed over into other people, and they get to affect in other people, too. So so we have to be watched. We have to be careful, as we always say, um, about what we're going through, right? And about how things are affecting us, right? Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm very interested. Once again, y'all, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not in counseling therapy or the like. Uh, these two beside me, y'all, these are rock stars right here. I don't know about all that. These are rock stars I appreciate right it. Here. They know what they talk about. Now, we do want to preface, you know, we, we don't want uh, things said and done on the show to be taken as your mental health therapy, right, mm -hmm. as therapy. But uh, but these two uh, beside me though they they do know a little little bit of what they talk about a, a lot more than what I what I know right <laughs> no but you picking uh, up on a lot of stuff now you starting to use a lot of mental health terminology and language yeah I'm learning I'm yeah. learning from the best brother so I'm, no, I'm learning from the best don't try to downplay man. that buddy right. I ain't, I ain't, okay I won't do it I won't do it <laughs> uh, I'm learning from the best uh, but speaking about that y'all I'm curious about uh, clients right that are coming to you all. Um, and they, you know, some of their stressors are coming from the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm curious of what they say, right? And curious, you know, if some of our audience may identify with what some of your clients are saying. So I want to start off like that, if it's okay. What are some of the stressors that people are saying that they find in the workplace? I think the people within That's the exactly workplace um, can mm. be one of the biggest challenges what I've heard people say is that it's not the actual work or the task that they're um, challenged with. It is operating and communicating with the people that they work with, which is the biggest challenge. And just as counselors and therapists, we value communication. I know within the field of counseling, it's easy to um, talk to my coworker or, or communicate with my supervisor and expect some type of healthy communication in return because we're all counselors. However, that's not the same in every um, field of work. Okay. So I just want to say that 
your quality of life depends. There's a great correlation between work and your quality of life. So I hear a lot of people complaining about work um, and in exchange, their quality of life is somewhat low. Mm. Um, however, they may look at me and be like, hey, you're you're super happy. You're super energetic. Well, I love what I do every day. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I see that one of the biggest challenges is um, just interacting and being able to work with the people in your workplace. Mm. Yeah, I completely mm. agree with that. I had a client who pretty much she was having some issues with a coworker and that they could work with that particular coworker or every time that coworker shows up he gets you know frustrated upset and it causes mm-hmm. big issues like anger outbursts and things like that. Um so I like to like you just to play off what you said, it's not about what other people do. That's it. Right? It's about how it impacts you. So why does this particular coworker makes you upset? Mm-hmm. What about it? Some actions or behaviors make you upset, and how can we work on that part of it? Because you're probably not going to be able to change again your coworker or your boss, but you can change how you respond and react to it, and what's it, what it is triggering inside of you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot, and then I can go with you know bosses, uh, and I can go with coworkers or any other issue in the workplace. We need to work on why is it impacting you so much that is causing these behaviors to arise, and how can we work on those things. I'll, go ahead. No, no, you go. Please. I want to bring it all the way back to step one, What's and step that one? is, do you enjoy your work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you value what you do? Do you feel like your contribution to society is valuable? Um, and in my studies, what I've learned is that the more someone, we have to understand our values and our interests and um our values and our interest in life in order to connect that with some type of work. So we're completely, if I'm interested in animals, but here I am every day working with computers, there's some type of disconnect there. And that may show through frustration. That may show through anxiety. That may Mm -hmm. show through depression. Mm -hmm. However, there's a disconnect. And, um, you know, I don't want to be naive and say that we don't, we, we are always obligated to work in a field that we're super passionate about. That would be ideal. And, um, you know, that's ideal. However, some people have to be the um, breadwinner of their household. So they have to work certain jobs where they're solely able to provide for their families or even for themselves. So I don't want to be naive to that. But I just want to bring it back to if you enjoy what you do, it's easier to interact with those hard um, those mm-hmm. difficult people, it's easier to interact with those people because it's on every job. You know, no job is perfect. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I think for me too, y'all, because uh, had, I've had situations. I had one uh, where I feel like somebody wanted to fight me at work. <laughs> dog, and all I did was tell them something. And I, I told them really how it was affecting our image as a workplace. Mm-hmm. And doggone, like, they about lost it on me. <laughs> um but but it was okay. I, I think it's important, um, y'all, too, to see people from a standpoint of human, right, and give people grace. Um, and I, I, with me, it's it's never kind of like Terrence said. It's never you know the about the person. It's always about me, right? Mm-hmm. What can I do in this situation to be an asset, right? To be valuable to the other person in this situation. If we can think of things like sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard, but if we can think of things like that too, right, and be more purpose driven, right, mm-hmm. um, in that regard, I think that'll help us out a lot because um, a lot of times, y'all, think, I think we can be selfish, right? Yeah. And, we, and we think about um, how it's affecting me, you know, and um, that's all that matters. But what about the other person, right? If we can try to understand the other person, right, and what they're going through, you know, they could be having a bad day, right? Mm-hmm. This this person, you know, they like they ready to launch out at me. Ain't no telling what kind of day they was having. Mm-hmm. And then as we talked about it, the questions I was asking, I found out they were having a bad day. Right. <laughs> they, they was having a bad day, extremely bad day. You know, medical issues and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So so we never know. So that understanding, and that's just something you have to put into your character, y'all. That's that's working on yourself. Um, but yeah, yeah. I also think, y'all, too, um, some jobs are demanding, too. All right. Yeah. Right? Um, some jobs are demanding. Some jobs are stressful. Um, do you ever run into people, right, who who has a job, who, who's working a job, and their duties are really stressful for them? Um, and if so, what what do you what kind of advice do you offer them? It, it depends for me, honestly. Um, it, it, it can like, it kind of goes back to are you enjoying your job? What you, but it, then it also goes to 
oh, well, I have to do this job because Mm -hmm. if I don't, then, you know, I'm not going to be able to provide for my family or and now I went, what I, what was coming to my mind was you have people that are doing jobs that they don't like mm-hmm. because they feel like they have to. Mm-hmm. Now in therapy, I start to work with, I can't tell you to go find another job right. or to quit your job. But what I can do is start to work with that part of you that feels like you have to do it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we start to work with that with different therapy techniques and, and to try to help, you know, reshape and reframe that particular belief so again as a therapist it's not my job to change anything Mm -hmm. it's just my job to help guide you to reframe how you look at a certain situation but that whole thing of i have to do it i must do it or if i don't do it then this will happen well it's not because you're happy doing it uh, but you're doing it in order to prevent something else from happening which then kind of leads us down this deeper hole yeah and I just want to acknowledge that, of course, some fields and some jobs are much more demanding than other jobs. Mm -hmm. So a doctor and a cashier, two different type of work settings. However, a doctor is obligated to make um, decisions that can impact someone's life, life or death. Mm -hmm. Um, A cashier, also, you know, a demanding job, but in a different aspect. They deal with money and they have... um, They have ethical issues, um, just like doctors to make. So jobs can be demanding versus less demanding. However, I think it's how we deal with the stress, how we deal with that level of demand. um, Mm. That determines our quality of life in such an amazing way. And I say that because if we're waking up every day, we know that we're going to be faced with some stressful um, situations or some difficult decisions to make. How do we enter that space? Are we intentional about, Mm. you know, moving slow in the mornings if we know that our job is going to be fast paced? Or do we wake up fast paced and just enter another fast paced environment without giving our bodies grace? Mm. Um, So I said that to say that stress management is very stress management is very important um, when we think about our mental health and um, the place that we work at. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And I think um, so. we talk often about setting boundaries. Right, with people also setting boundaries with your job, with mm-hmm. your job as well. Um, I think it's really important. I had a, a, a I don't want to say a boss, I'll say a leader because that's the type <laughs> of person, that's the type of personality that they were. Mm-hmm. A leader that okay. once told me, you know, um, if you need to at five o'clock, cut off, mm-hmm. you know, cut off, create that boundary, right? No matter how much work that you have, it'll get done, it'll get done, right? The deadlines, whatever, or even put yourself in a position, right? Like we talking about stress management, managing your priorities, right? Mm-hmm. What are priorities for right. me in my work, in my job? Managing priorities is so important, y'all. And uh, so I have to, and myself, uh, so my job is, there's a lot of different parts to my job that I have to be aware of. So I really have a, uh, I have a system. It's important, a system. Right, organization. Very important. When, you, when you're in a demanding job or, or a job, that's demanding to you. It might not be demanding to me, but mm-hmm. you know, to you, all the nuances may be demanding for you. When you're mm-hmm. in a job like that, really having a system is really important and managing that system. Sometimes I have to go back and retool that system, but mm-hmm. I'm being intentional, being intentional about where I'm trying to go and pr- prioritizing. But my system, I have to prioritize everything. So if it's very important for that day, it gets five stars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it's important, but not as, it gets four stars. If it's not that important for that day, but I know it's still, I still need to have it on my mind, it'll get one star. But um, I just think that's really important is, is having, you, having yourself a system that can save you a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. It can save you a lot of stress right there. Um, so that as a boundary itself. Yeah. I agree. Organization is very important mm-hmm. and just prioritizing those tasks. Um, it Prioritizing tasks brings some level of peace and knowing that, okay, once I accomplish task number one, I'm able to move on to task number two. Um, and you're able to directly see what you have presented in front of you for that day. And of course, I know other tasks may come, but prioritizing tasks is one of the easiest ways to just manage stress um, yes. on your workforce. Something else I think about in um, unfortunately, 
unseen struggles in your workplace is that some employees or some coworkers may have hidden disabilities that we don't even know about that may mm. impact their work. So how are we interacting with individuals um, not knowing their personal story, not knowing what's going on at home? How are we providing grace? How are we providing empathy? Um, and how are we just showing up as a coworker to our other coworkers? That says a lot about um, uh, about us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, the I keep on thinking of unseen, and that's mm-hmm. an unseen one. Like a disability can be unseen, mm-hmm. right? Disability isn't just something that you know is visibly uh, is visible. Right. But then also unseen things of like you uh, mentioned earlier, things that are going on at home mm-hmm. that I didn't come to work, and now you know I got an attitude with someone. Or they get an attitude with me, and then I just flip out on them. But they don't know what happened at home. Right. So these, so being mindful that again, I like to always say everybody has a story. So not taking things personal at work, right? Mm-hmm. Or having simple mm-hmm. conversations at work to communicate, hey, I, I was wrong, or hey, you know, yeah. I am not in the mood today. You know, just something to really get that let the, somebody else know, like your boss or coworkers know. Today's not the day. Right. But you ain't got to do that with a bad attitude or do mm-hmm. that with reacting to what they said, but you can communicate that to them. And I, I think about three words. I think about awareness yep. of your own feelings and your own experiences, accountability, oh, yeah. how you were talking about. And that can be difficult in the workplace mm-hmm. because um, we've seen those individuals that don't want to take accountability, whether it's a work related task that they completely messed up on um, or even, you know, some something more casual. We've seen people not take accountability and in exchange, it impacts us. Um, but also forgiveness. Ooh, yeah. Forgiveness in the workforce. F- it can often be easier to forgive our families or the ones that we share um, a household with or our friends because we have that type of personal bond. But what about forgiveness in the workplace? It's not so easy because you're not directly attached to that person. Um, and sometimes we, we may feel obligated to not want to forgive a coworker because our feelings are hurt. But I think that word forgiveness is so important in order to move past something that happened with somebody, um, a coworker or a supervisor, so that you are able to grow um, and move forward. Mm-hmm. I think it's imp- uh, that mindfulness, accountability, all that is, is, is so important, y'all. I think um, – one reason it's important, a lot of times there are underlying issues, right, mm-hmm. for, for our behaviors when we come to work or for us bringing certain things to work. I think about people who uh, who work, work, work. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's to overcompensate, right, for their insecurities, for their feelings of mm-hmm. inf- inferiority, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think about people like that. I also think about um, people who um, who don't like people at work. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so they come to work and they don't want to communicate, mm-hmm. right? So they have that barrier up there of, of communicating, and that causes more problems, right? Yeah. And and those are unseen struggles sometimes that people are dealing with, you know, um, pe- people who are who are uh, people who are lonely, right? Mm-hmm. People who are lonely and they come right. in the, and they're coming to work, projecting and that, projecting that, and even isolating themselves, right? Um, yeah, I, so I, I can add that. to that. Please. So please. one um, unseen struggle that a lot of people in the workplace may deal with is the hierarchy of power. Um, power is something that mm. is so relevant when we when we talk about work and when we talk about um, interacting interacting with our coworkers and supervisors. Some people are power driven and they they want that title. They want that um, that office in the corner so that like you were saying earlier they feel they no longer feel um inferior to the ones to the individuals around them so i know um when we talk about power and interacting with individuals that seek it that can be challenging as well Mm -hmm. yeah i always thought that was a that was a thing for me i was i was kind of taught you know you want to be the the best and the brightest you know and all of that and i i've uh went on that journey of scaling myself not scaling my potential back, but mm-hmm. scaling myself back, right, from thinking in that way, right, because I, I feel like you can run into um, you can run into a lot of uh, problems for yourself and from uh, for other people, right? Mm-hmm. You can start overworking yourself, mm-hmm. right, and then you can just put yourself in competition with people right. sometimes when there's no need <laughs> for no competition at mm-hmm. all. Um, so I, I think that's something that I've uh, just to share personally, mm-hmm. something that I've worked on. Um, and you know, uh, re- really looking for uh, other people. You know, it's, it's not about me. 
You know, it's, it's not about me at all. I'll get what's meant for me. Right. You know, at the end of the day, I truly believe that. Um, so that was that was a great point, uh, Hannah. Bringing up that point about uh, that point about power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it's a lot of like I said this in a previous episode, external things going on yeah. that impacts the internal. So you have external things such as. Uh, the hierarchy of work or mm-hmm. the power that my, my boss has that probably sometimes take advantage of. Right. But it all boils down to you, the individual. Mm-hmm. So if you, the individual, uh, is able to manage your own emotions or you, the mm-hmm. own individual that knows how, to, knows, knows how to cope when you're triggered, then a lot of the things that might impact you at work probably won't do it as, mm-hmm. as much mm-hmm. anymore. So it's, I think uh, it's a lot of times we got to figure out how do we work with our own systems, our own bodies to try to cope with these things, no matter what external factor happens, whether that's at work or you know at home or anywhere else. Mm-hmm. All right. And I just want to shift gears just a little bit um, mm-hmm. because we talked about interacting with, you know, well, we talked about different challenges that, we've seen our clients face in the workplace, um, but also talking about those different disabilities, whether they're seen or unseen, a lot of mental health conditions are invisible. Mm -hmm. So um, we may see the manifestations of them. Like, for example, a person that is depressed may be more isolated Mm -hmm. um, or they may be more, they may be uninterested during a business meeting. Mm -hmm. And here we are second guessing, you know, why is this person so uninterested? Why are they so distant? Whole time they may may be depressed. Another example is anxiety. That can show up in our co-workers with someone that is constantly second guessing themselves or feeling like they're not enough. Um, and then another example is ADD, and that can show up in our coworkers or even in ourselves as um, impulsive decision making. So making decisions decisions very impulsive, very quickly without thinking about the long term consequences. So just wanted to put that nugget in. I appreciate yep. that, Hannah. Yeah, because I think about as leaders, right? Um, like you get a lot of people in management that's supposed to be managing people, but I like the term leader um, so much more. As leaders, I think we have to be conscious about the people who we're supposed to be managing, right? Mm-hmm. And um, the toll sometimes or the effect that uh, that our systems and whatnot are having on people, right? Um, because at the end of the day, if you want production to be at its highest, you gotta you need the people. Mm-hmm. You need the people to be at their best potential, right? So um, I, I think that. Um, I think even I think one thing leaders can do is uh, create an expectation, right? That you can come to me, right? That my door is open, even if I don't have all the problems. Let's get you, let's let's maybe uh, let, let's get you some. Uh, what can I do, mm-hmm. right? What can I do to to help you out in this situation so it's a better atmosphere for you? I think it's on is uh, incumbent upon our leaders, uh, in, in you know in the workplace to to do just that, right? Because um, I've been I've been in atmospheres where. Uh, you know, it's very rigid, and I've been in ones where it's very flexible, and and that permeates through the entire organization, right? Mm-hmm. Through, through the workplace, um, it, it gets into the culture. You know, we talked about that before, work, mm-hmm. workplace culture. It gets into the culture of uh, of, of how we of how we um, how we conduct ourselves. And, and you know what? Um, I saw one time um, I saw the the uh, CEO, I guess you could say, director or whatever he. Yeah, um, he or she, whatever you know, they the way that they carried themselves um, was so strong that all the managers that fell up under them carried themselves in the exact same way. Mm. And it was very toxic. It was very toxic. And they started, and I know that it wasn't necessarily a part of their personality so much, but they just started because that because that culture was so strong there. They started conducting themselves in a very similar way. It was an ugly thing. It was an <laughs> ugly thing too. So I think that you. When you're in a leadership role, you have to be mindful of, uh, right, where where your um, what's influencing you. Mm-hmm. I would say that because then you whatever's influencing you, you're probably gonna influence your the people who are coming to you, who are reporting to you in the same type of way. Yeah. Right. And then guess what? Those people can go home and can influence their children mm-hmm. <laughs> in it's that same pattern. way. It's, it's a pattern. It's a pattern, right? And all these things we get right there from work, y'all. Mm-hmm. It ain't that something. Yeah. I think uh, mm-hmm. another element I want to add is that we have to understand um, the personalities and the work style of the people that we're working around. Um 
one thing, so I, I started a new job in January, and one of my coworkers, she's another counselor. She asked me, she said, "Are you, um, are you type A or type B personality?" Mm. I was like, "Hmm, I'm a combination." Um, bless and bless you. And the reason why I said we have to understand different work, um, different personalities and styles of the people around us is because we're able to initially communicate with that person in their in their personality style or in the work style that they operate in. So, for example, type A people, um, they can be ambitious, competitive, um, more organized, time conscious. So they're strict on those deadlines. And we know that that's completely different from type B individuals that are a little more relaxed, um, let's see, a little more relaxed, patient, easygoing, um, less host- hostile. So when we think about interacting with um, a supervisor, even having a difficult conversation with a coworker, how do we approach that conversation? Um, how do we process things with inside of us? Like Terrence goes often says, how do we respond um, in a matter in a manner where we're able to get success out of whatever situation we're going through? So just evaluating and analyzing someone's work style and their personality styles is very important. So I saw a report, y'all. It said 43% of employees believe that if they told their employer about a mental health condition, it would have a negative impact on them at work. Mm -hmm. What if I don't feel like I can trust my boss with knowing that I'm feeling anxious or depressed or insecure or just not in a good state Um, or I'm having challenges to my mental Mm well-being? What if I feel I can't trust my boss? What what, what would y'all say? I'd say... If you can't trust your boss, there's still other places you can go, uh, other resources that your job should have uh, to help you with, uh, you know, verbalizing those things. Whether that's an employee assistance program, mm-hmm. whether that is, uh, you know, going talking to a representative at uh, Human Resources, which people probably want to stay away from Human Resources too. I understand that too, yeah. you know, but. Um, there's different resources probably at the job that you can utilize even if you don't uh, trust your boss. Mm -hmm. So educating yourself about those resources so you know your options instead of uh, suffering in silence, I think is the best option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, A cool thing about how our American government operates is that you don't necessarily have to reveal that you have a disability um, to your direct supervisor. Like Terrence was saying, there's other um, avenues that you can go to still see some type of work accommodations um, or some type of extra support, such as through the EAP program, Employee Assistance Program. So just looking at um, and researching different options to seek more, um, more support is very important. And some people don't understand that their boss is human too. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I had to do, I, I learned my boss. I was mm-hmm. willing to put in some time to learn my boss. A lot of people at the, <laughs> at this particular job that I was at, um, they they just they didn't like the boss or whatever. They uh, he's controlling all these things. I took some time, man. I, whenever I was in their office, man, I just took some time to just talk to them, mm-hmm. right? Ask them about their background, even you know how they got there, you know what what was important to them, and so I got to know them. And then when I, I feel as though when you get to know someone, right, when you when you are having problems, right, or challenges or whatever, you you better know how to put them, right, in a way where they can understand what you're going through. Not saying that's gonna work all the time, right, but at least you're a little more comfortable. I feel mm-hmm. right. I feel like, and a little more confident. Your boss is no longer your boss, right? It's this person that's in this role that, you know, is responsible for you. Um, so making it human, right? Making right. making that interaction, making that experience human, and not putting you know putting too much pressure on yourself. Um, I know it's I know it's helped out with me a lot, but yeah. Um, yeah. And that just that just adds to one point that I said in one of our previous episodes about doing things out of love. Mm-hmm. And I, and I'm so cautious about using that word love because you know we're talking about the workplace. But what intention and what tone are we going into the conversation with? Mm. If we're already feeling critical and um, this person owes me something, if we already have that that hostile host, mm. hostility within us, um, we're most likely not going to get success out of whatever you know, conversation we're about to approach. But if you just take a step back, process our feelings, um, watch our tone of voice, watch our language, like you often say, Terrence, um, then we're able to enter that conversation in a different perspective. You know. What are some uh, strategies y'all would say for uh, for supporting yourself, right? 
while you're at work, right? When you're going through those things, I think y'all mm-hmm. y'all have been great. Y'all spoke on uh, really communicating, right, and um, taking the initiative. I, I would say um, taking responsibility, accountability of yourself. Um, one that uh, one that I was thinking about was um, the rest and self care. Yeah. That's exactly I what I was about, you to, about say. to say. Yeah. Well, come on, you talk about it. Well, then, it's just. Me. I mean, that's an area that where I feel like I personally have to improve in. Um, because I, I I got that hustle culture, you know, from my mom. Uh, we always work, 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 work. But I feel like taking that time to do some type of self care, you know, something mm-hmm. that you enjoy, or learning a new skill, or learning something different. Excuse me. It's something that you know it can help take the stress off of the work situation. So if I know, you know, yes, I'm gonna go in here and I might ha- get some type of stressful situation, but when I leave, I get to go ride my motorcycle. Guess what I'm thinking about? Right, right. Not the person that I'm, you know, ha- having some issues with or the yeah. circumstances. I'm, I'm thinking about riding my motorcycle, my motorcycle. Mm-hmm. right? So I, I have something to look forward to, and I think that's what it, it really boils down to. What do you have to look forward to? If the only thing you have to look forward to is this negative experience at work, you're probably gonna have some type of negative reaction or emotion from it. But if I have something to look forward to outside of work, I can get through this because I have this waiting on me. Right. And I think that's very important. So prioritizing, you said taking breaks and prioritizing rest, I think is another element. Mm-hmm. Um, self-care, you know, getting adequate adequate rest the night before you go to work so that you're able to be present and so you're able to... Um, you know, just communicate and have more logical thinking. So sufficient rest is very important when we talk about um, our mental health and on the workplace. Like you said, prioritizing and taking breaks. So breaks are very important. Um, Just from my experience, the people that say, oh, I don't even have a a lunch break. I don't even take a break to, to eat. Those are usually the the people that don't like their job or, you know, are in these fields that are more demanding. Um, and in return, their their personal lives are very stressful. So prioritizing breaks, prioritizing eating. Um, we often think about wants and needs. And a want is, OK, after I finish this this day, I want to ride my motorcycle. A need is, hey. I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't drink coffee this morning. I have even had a bottle of water to drink. I need water. I need to eat. Um, You know, and I might need to take a nap before I ride that motorcycle. So prioritizing our needs over our wants is very important. But I like what you said, um, using the reward system. Mm -hmm. I I do that for myself, whether it's in school or whether it's um, in the workplace. Once I meet a certain deadline or once I complete a certain task, rewarding myself in some type of way. I keep like starbursts in my desk. So once I do something super good (laughs) that day, I'm like, okay, I can eat a starburst, you know, and that's just a small reward. But those personal rewards um, make a huge difference in how we're able to operate within our work work culture. Beautiful, Mm -hmm. beautiful. I don't have a starburst, but man, when (laughs) when when I do something, when I complete a task, I might get up and walk. Mm-hmm. I might just give myself some time, just some space. Some space, right? Some space away from it, some space to say, okay, I, I did this, right? Mm-hmm. I got some, got some more work to look forward to. But uh, as I'm walking, right, how can I, uh, how can I kind of prepare for it? How can yeah. I calm down from it? Show myself that it's not as big as a, as I'm making it. A lot mm-hmm. of times, walking does that for me. A lot of times, I be in the office, y'all, and I know like folks be looking at me like I'm crazy because <laughs> I, w- I will get up and I will walk and I will. I will brainstorm, mm-hmm. right? I'll, I'll be walking and brainstorm. Sometimes I go outside and take a walk, and it helps me, you know, to, right. to, to get away from the just just, just the um, the uh, routine mm-hmm. of it all. The routine yep. of it all. Routine can can be uh, can can uh, be a hindrance of creativity. Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like routine can be a hindrance of creativity. Right. So. Um, yeah. yeah. Also, I also want to add that if we know someone that is experiencing those unseen struggles in their workplace, offer support to that individual. Please. Whether it's a random text during the day, like, hey, you got this, keep going. Yeah. Um, I, there's so many motivational memes that we can just screenshot and send someone in the middle of the day that can just add a level of happiness or um, some level of peace or, hey, this person is thinking about me. I'm going through these challenges at work. But just knowing that they have that support and someone understands and sees the situation they're going through, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How we feeling, y'all? We Good, feeling man. Good. Good. Feeling about this, about this? I, y'all got any more, y'all? You no, she, she, uh, she said it perfectly. I'm going to tell you one, one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take me a break. 
<laughs> and, I'm, and I'm gonna eat. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and we we want some feedback from you all. So what are some workplace struggles um, yeah. that you all may be experiencing? Mm-hmm. Um, we love hearing feedback from you all. So please comment. Um, you know, chat with us. Yep. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, yeah. Um, I, I I enjoyed that episode myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed. I, I work in workforce development, so I'm always thinking about. Um, you know, as we're building out, uh, as we're building things out for the workforce and better systems, systems that lead to better productivity, uh, you know, this, this, this is something that's important for me. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you all mm-hmm. um, for, for, for the guidance and, and the help that y'all gave me. And I appreciate you all, of course, as always, for tuning in uh, and Speaking With Gravity. Uh, please subscribe to Speaking With Gravity. Subscribe on YouTube, you know. Um, Find us and subscribe on um, on on um, those podcast networks as well as social media. Please follow. Uh, check us out for updates and please ask questions. You know, um, ask questions. We got some of the answers. You know, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe a few of them. Yeah, maybe, maybe we got the of, resources you know? to the answers. There yeah, you go. That, that's 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 the good. One. There you go. <laughs> I find it. There you go. You know? there you go. Uh, once again, it's uh, Joshua. Uh, you can find me uh, on social media at Joshua underscore. Be impactful. Yes, and you all can locate me on Instagram at Hannah Elise two underscores. Until next time, please take care of yourself and your mental health. And you can find me at Instagram on Terrence underscore Dolphin. See y'all next time. Take care.